This course is an introduction to absolute science, which has made possible the end or consummation of human history and the advent of an incredible new world and new race of humanity, the Jedi Order. This is the global revolution and paradigm shift that is now taking place in the world. In short, history ended with the A-team, Kant, Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel. But to fully understand this, Plato and Descartes are indispensable. A, by the way, in the A-team is for the absolute meaning that only one reality exists, and it achieves full consciousness of itself in and through human history. Now, a brief outline of the course. After the introductory discussion of absolute science and the history of philosophy, we will study Plato's Republic, which will take us up to the midterm. Then we will study Descartes' Meditations, followed by Hegel's Science of Nature, a major part of absolute science, and end finally with the historical transition from negative to positive post-modernity and the twin political and metaphysical revolutions of the 1960s. In tandem with this, we shall be taking up a series of key topics from the three parts of the Jedi Handbook. The Jedi Truth, the Jedi Code, and the Jedi Order, which shows how the principles of absolute science or the knowledge of the Force can be used to solve many of our world's major problems, such as ignorance, miseducation, economic and political gridlock, inequality, war and terrorism, and problems in relationships, health, science, and religion. Our four topics for today are absolute science, the history of philosophy, Plato, and what is a Jedi. One, absolute science, which is the goal of history, beings or the universe's knowledge of itself. This is just a snapshot of absolute science, and for a more detailed account, see the R.D. Winfield and the Coming Revolution in Science article, the Jedi Handbook's account, and the PowerPoint presentation on the end of history. The main point is that there is only one reality. Consciousness or thought. But for this one reality to know itself, it must first transcend what Plato calls the cave, the cave of multiplicity and separateness. This is the job of the introduction to science. Now, once we know that reality is one, and hence that we are one with this one reality, we can engage in absolute science, which is nothing but the absolutes, the ones knowledge of itself, which consists in the sciences of logic, nature, and spirit. In essence, we move from the one reality as thought, as logic, to its opposite, matter, or nature, or multiplicity, and then to their unity, spirit, or Jedi. We move, that is, from inner to outer to the unity of inner and outer, a unity in which inner or consciousness 
trumps outer or matter. Two, the history of philosophy, or the becoming of absolute science and kingdom come, or if you will, the Jedi order. Here I will give you just a sketch. For a full account, see the Jedi Handbooks, part one, and the diagram on page 31. Four periods are involved in this becoming. The ancient, medieval, modern, and postmodern negative and positive periods. Now the truth, the one reality, the one consciousness, the unity of opposites, is there from the beginning, but unaware of itself. Hence, the raison d'etre of history. Philosophy is nothing but the search for the arche, A-R-C-H-E, the eternal principle and ground of all things. In brief, the history of philosophy advances from an objective arche, one outside of us, to a subjective arche, one inside of us, namely consciousness or thought. Plato and Descartes are the main figures in this advance. The key to Plato and to all of philosophy is precisely the divided line. One should especially, in this regard, read pages 6 to 8 in the Jedi Handbook. There is not only one world, that of the five senses, matter, manyness, and separation, the region below the divided line, but a second region above the divided line, that of reason and thought which is absolutely one and indivisible. Plato calls this one reality, the eternal arche, the good. And the goal of life is simply to achieve knowledge of this arche and become one with it, that is, become immortal and divine. One must escape the illusory world of sense multiplicity, the cave, and enters into the world of reality. For various reasons, Plato was unable to do it. It was first achieved by religion in the next medieval period in, for example, Christianity's God-Man, the unity of opposites. However, its form Picture thinking was inadequate and had to be overcome. And this happened in the next modern period, which began with Descartes' Meditations in 1641. It was Descartes' famous turn from objects outside us to our subject and consciousness that opened the floodgates which led to absolute science. Here began the movement from an objective arche to a subjective arche, from a finite consciousness as reality to an infinite or absolute consciousness as all reality, which happened by stages in the 18 philosophers Kant, Fichte, Schelling, and Hegel. In short, once you know that consciousness, or I am, is the only reality, you also know that everything else is nothing or appearance or simply transitory stages or moments leading up to the one reality, the arche now conscious of itself. And this is absolute science. So with this achievement, history has come to its end.
All that remains to be done is to educate or elevate the whole planet into this knowledge. Hence we have a negative postmodern period followed by a positive postmodern final period of human history. In one word, we have to get rid of the false God and heaven that are not here and now, someplace else, in order to realize the true God and heaven, which are and only are here and now. As Jesus, for example, said, quote, the kingdom of God is now within you. Three, now we'll move on to Plato and the Republic. Briefly, Plato's dates are 428 to 348 BC. In his youth, Plato associated with Socrates, his teacher in Athens. But when Socrates was executed in 399 BC, Plato fled to Megara and there determined to immortalize his beloved master in his famous dialogues. Soon after, he set up his academy in Athens, the first university in history. And among his illustrious students was Aristotle, who after Plato's passing at 80 years of age, set up his own school called the Lyceum. The Republic is Plato's most important dialogue. Its theme is justice or right living and how to acquire it. It has three parts. What justice or right is not, what justice is, and how to get it. In brief, after Socrates refutes the three definitions or views of justice given by Cephalus, Polemarchus, and Thrasybicus, Glaucon and Adimantus, Plato's brothers, demand that Socrates give his own, that is the true, definition of justice, and also show that the just life is intrinsically far preferable to the unjust life. Even if no one knows that you are just, or even thinks you are a scoundrel. To do this, Socrates first creates an ideal state in thought and shows what justice is in the state. Then, he turns to the soul and its three parts, and shows what justice is in the soul. Lastly, he shows how you can achieve justice in your own life, and become immortal and divine. This will involve the metaphysical study of the divided line, the allegory of the cave, and the five philosophical studies. Okay, this unit, unit one, will treat the first part of the Republic. What justice or right is not. What is important is to understand why a given definition of justice is false or wrong, or what Socrates' reasons or arguments are. Now, of course, you must read the entire text of Plato. Here, I will just give you the gist of the argument. Now, as for Cephalus' definition, justice is telling the truth and paying your debts, Socrates argues, or points out, that it is not just or right to give someone back a weapon which he lent you when he has become mad or deranged, nor to tell someone the truth when he is in that condition. As for Paul Marcus's definition, justice is helping your friends 
and harming your enemies, Socrates points out that it is never right to harm your enemies or anyone, since harming someone makes them a worse person, which cannot be right or a consequence of a just action. As for Thrasymachus, the sophist's definition of justice as the interest of the stronger, Socrates offers several arguments. One is this. The interest of the stronger means the interest of the ruler. But ruling is an art, the art of governing. And all arts, like the art of medicine, have as their purpose and interest not themselves, but the subject on which they are exercised, the patient or the citizens of the state. So justice is not the interest of the stronger, <clears throat> the ruler, but rather the interest of the weaker, the citizenry. Another argument is this. Lysimachus says the unjust is superior to the just in intelligence, but the unjust, whose goal is unlimited self-assertion or is out to outdo everyone else, proves to be in fact stupid. For example, the musician knows the one perfect pitch of a string in tuning a guitar. The unjust person will try to outdo the musician by exceeding the one perfect pitch, thereby showing that he is unmusical and lacks intelligence. In the next unit, we will see what justice really is and why the just life is superior to the unjust life. Four. Now the answers to questions four and five concerning a Jedi and how you can become one can be found in the Jedi Handbook on the pages indicated in B reading. In essence, a Jedi is your true self. That is, the one reality, which we also call the Force, actualized and individualized. You can become a Jedi <clears throat> by living by the Jedi Code and realizing that you already are a Jedi. That is one with absolute reality. You only need to realize or become aware of this by the indicated methods, by becoming educated or pointed, by focusing 24 7 on the truth, the unity of opposites, and overcoming miseducation and the illusion of the cave. Now, don't forget to post something about yourself on the discussion board due Thursday, January 25th, and also to post a reply to a classmate, a classmate's posting by Sunday, January 29th. See the detailed syllabus in Unit 1 for more. Also, watch all the videos listed under F videos. They are very important. Also, they are eight in number, which I know is a lot. But from now on, there will be only two or three each unit, I promise. Also, watch the End of History PowerPoint presentation, very important, which contains evidence from science, philosophy, and religion of the End of History, absolute science, and the revolution in consciousness now taking place in the world. Thank you.